when there is something expected um, to happen in the future, at the time of expecting, uh, they also understand that there would be some variation. Let's say that, for example, uh, for the future, there would be demand for 10,000 units. So that is what is estimated. And planning will be taken up according to the demand arising at 10,000 units for the next period. Everything else would be planned. But right at the time of planning itself, if they understand that, there is a possibility of having a variation. Variation would be there. That is, they see that because of certain factors, certain reasons, um, the demand could be um, less than 10,000, say 9,000 or more than 10,000, say 12,000. If they see that certain factors will also cause some variation in the expected value. So when variations are expected to happen, when they see that um, this could happen, that could happen, something else also could happen. So what are we basically talking about? The variation in the expected value is referred to as risk and uncertain. Both of them mean the same thing, but the the difference in risk and uncertainty will be according to what uh, Ajay Krishna has mentioned. See, the, um, when there is a variation, what is the likeliness of the variation or the probability of that variation? Also, if it is known, then we call that to be as risk. If the probability or the likeliness of the variation, if it is not known, just that the variation would be there is known, then we call that uncertainty. If the probability of the variation along with the variation is also known, we call that to be as risk. So risk is um, mentioned here. Risk is equal to variability in future returns, but uh, the risk is quantified or calculated as the probability of such a thing happening into the impact on account of variability in the future return. So that is calculated as risk. But in case of uncertainty, there would be um, that probability would not be there. It would not be known about what is uh, what is the um, probability of the variation is not known. So what is the total amount of loss which could occur cannot be quantified. Okay, So that is the main difference here in case of um, risk and uncertainty. See here it also says that there could be upside risk and downside risk. Risk need not be all the time looked at as uh, unfavorable or a negative tone, but then it can also be seen as upside. Upside is a favorable thing. Uh, See if they are anticipating that 10,000 uh, units would be sold. And if at all, if there is a variation and they end up selling uh, 12,000, there is a variation, but that variation will be a positive variation. <clears throat> so it is uh, taken as both an upside, uh, upside risk and downside risk. There are certain other factors also we have to learn uh, in risk and uncertainty. We would be learning about the concepts, the various research techniques which are used so that they can get the information about what are what are those uh, um, factors which are which cause variation or how much variation could be caused. So information should be available. So how this information is acquired? What are the ways in which the information is acquired? The research techniques which are available. We have a we have certain concepts like scenario planning, simulation, then sensitivity analysis, then uh, payoff tables and expected values are numerical part, which we will be looking into today's class. Uh, so scenario planning, simulation and sensitivity analysis will be learned. These are theoretical concepts. So let's learn them. So if um, the amount of risk has to be calculated, if the assessment of risk has to take place, then um, what, are, what are the factors or what are the events that cause an impact, the events which, uh, which result in some impact on the business 
so that has to be first identified uh, for example internally uh, if they if they get to understand that there would be strike called up by the employee so then that affects the productivity so the there would be a um, variation in what expected profits they were uh, expecting what profits they were expecting so there would be a variation in that let's say that governments <coughs> uh either stops giving a subsidy or it starts giving a subsidy see uh, then either it would be adversely or favorably affected so there is some change which is happening in the external environment the car, there is uh, severe competition new players also have entered into the market so the customers get attracted to them so demand would fall suppliers do not supply material or suppliers give a um, discount in the price so these are external factors the internal factors we can see that um, maybe there is some dispute in the organization maybe some fraud internally happened that things are not in place there are various things which can happen to the business on account of that risk would uh, would arise so when uh, risk would arise on account of that um, first they should understand what are those events which can cause risk to the business which can cause a variation in what they have anticipated or expected then how to get that information how to find out that so we see that what are the research techniques we see um either they can uh, themselves find out uh, or acquire this information or they can use it already which is um published by someone already which is present available that information also can be used so you must have heard about primary data and secondary data primary data is something which they themselves find out and then get get that first hand information so they acquire the information if it is secondary information someone else has worked on that information they have acquired that and it is already published so it is available they just have to use that information and then draw some insights about that so we see that desk research wherein the information is already available either company records or general economic intelligence specific market data so these are published data um see uh, company records government records published resources all of them see the work is already done by someone else it is available it just has to be taken use it and then draw whatever insights or inferences one has to draw otherwise they themselves can personally enter into the market okay they can take up the field research and um, find out what is the opinion motivation measurement um, see op, um, what does that mean see when um, when they themselves find out the information they get the information they collect the information in that case see they could be uh, the information which is collected could be in terms of facts and figures or it could be in terms of interviews or it could be in terms of opinion so some way um, an interview has um, is conducted i mean a video interview audio interview then from that insights have to be drawn so when they enter into the market all all that information on first hand we cannot be um, collected in quantitative uh, values the facts and figures it is not necessary that it would be in that particular fashion okay opinion motivation measurement then they can have questionnaire circulated experiments observations group interviews trade testing focus groups all these things are various ways in which they collect the information then we would be looking at what is scenario um, planning as uh, the planning is taken up for the future so when planning is taken up for the future so the base for planning is the past data so they they generally observe the base is taken as the past data take some information now draw some insights out of that and then um, build up the plan for the future that is normally that is the practice that is observe what happened in the past and then understand what could repeat in the future 
that says that identify high impact high uncertainty factors high impact high uncertainty factors from the past whatever happened in the past is observed so first identify what are those events which can cause high impact or those factors which are quite uncertain and there is great impact on the business because of these things identify different possible future so what could again happen in the future also can be identified identify different possible futures the from among them the ones which are consistent they repeatedly happen um they repeatedly happen the variation in the demand there's too much of fluctuation um see there may be uh, availability of some resources consistently troubling so it is not available so what are those things which are um, which happen which can cause some uh, issue to the business out of that the ones which are consistent consistent identify consistent future scenarios so basically what would again repeat in the future is identified note down it as a scenario then take up planning if such a thing again happens because the chance that such a thing would again repeat in the future if it is there note down note down that as a scenario once it is noted down as a scenario then the planning for that scenario will be taken up so if the same thing again repeats like uh, wave 1 and wave 2 whatever wave 1 happened the same thing repeated in uh, wave 2 also so uh, this was anticipated many have an anticipated that yes this would uh, repeat once again this not that one time even it could again repeat then the planning um, see whether the planning was there in place or not we are not commenting about that but then planning can be taken up accordingly so also in business we see that uh, favorable unfavorable whatever it is whatever happened in the past there, there is a possibility to happen in the future identify such things if there is so much of information available from the secondary research primary research some information would be available whether or not this would be repeated if they understand that they are consistent to happen again even in the future also note down as a scenario noted down as a scenario and then and then take up the planning for that scenario then for each scenario identify and assess possible courses of action for the firm so what should be done if this repeats in the future this if the scenario repeats again in the future what should be done how prepared should the business be is what is a plan then when the actual thing happens so whatever is the plan which they have uh, prepared for the future is the reality happening in that particular manner is it the same thing which is repeated um is it the same thing it which is implemented implementation if whether it is implemented in the same manner so monitor that observe that and then if there are any um if the plan is not properly implemented measures are taken to implement it appropriately then if the plan was not appropriate in the first place in future whenever they are taking up a plan for the uh, future scenarios they will properly plan so revise the scenario and strategic options so that is about the scenario planning whatever happened in the past is observed thoroughly and identify those events which have high impact and high uncertainty factors and identify if some of them can repeat even in the future if it is identified to to be repeated in the future note it down as a scenario and then take a planning for that scenario when the plan is implemented observe the plan how it is implemented observe how the implementation is going on if the implementation is not proper then measures are taken to implement it properly otherwise um, it is if the planning was not sufficient if they were not prepared um, see all the governments have failed in terms of planning planning for the second wave they have not prepared for um, enough number of beds or uh, oxygen arrangements or whatever the med medical requirement was there so all governments irrespective of whichever party we see that in india that was a major failure what is observed then oxygen uh, things and then um, um, even in terms of uh, providing proper vaccines so we see that the planning was not appropriate 
So when the, the when the planning is not appropriate, definitely that will have an impact. So if in such situations, if there is no proper planning, then measures should be taken to take up the planning better for future. So revise the plan and implement it for the future. Next, we have simulation. There are two things um, which are almost similar but with a difference. One is simulation. There's another one which is called as sensitivity analysis. Simulation and sensitivity analysis. See, when there is a set of... Um, when there are set of inputs which are introduced, then an output is generated. So, there are certain key factors, there are certain inputs uh, which will uh, give the desired result. If there is a change in these inputs, then there would be an impact on the output. Change in the inputs um, and observe what ha happens on to the output. So, here it says that randomly, Apply probabilities to key factors in scenario analysis. So scenario analysis when planning is taken up. Then under simulation, what is done is various alternatives um, when they are present, there are, um, the risk is basically variation in returns. So variation in returns, let's say that there are three variations. We were discussing about one example uh, of demand. Demand could be either 10 or it could be 8, it could fall down to 8, or it could be uh, above that and it can be 12. So if there are three different possibilities which are anticipated for the future, along with these expectations, we also should have a uh, probability mention. Let's say 30% chances are that uh, the demand would be 8,000. 50% chances are that the demand would be the same, 10,000. Um, then 12,000. Uh, 20% chances that the demand would be uh, would rise to 12,000. So if this is what is anticipated, then how do we calculate? We calculate, we multiply each of them, 8 into 0.3, then 10 into 0.5. So this is also called as expected value. Then 12 into 0.2. After we multiply, whatever are the values, the sum total of that is the expected value, or that is how uh, what would happen in the future is anticipated. So risk is calculated in this particular fashion. Now, when um, there is a change in the variables, so the variables, the probabilities, if they, if they change that, use random numbers to select a particular scenario and calculate outcome. So they keep constantly keep making changes and then observe what is the impact on the output. Anything randomly, randomly they keep changing the numbers multiple times. The same thing is experimented and then identify what is the best possible outcome. Repeat until build up a picture of possible outcome. So, many things let's say if this, if this changes by uh, if this is 40 percent, then this is 50 percent, so this becomes 10 percent. So, one at a time, multiple things at a time, like that. Many changes are um, take. Um, taken into consideration for calculations and then take a decision about what is their appetite to take the risk. What is risk appetite? I will explain to you in a short while. So simulation talks about taking up the same thing, uh, taking up the same experiment by making multiple changes to the given set of data and then note down what is the output every single time. Note down the output and uh, Then based on the risk appetite of the organization, best decision is taken. The same thing is even talk, uh, mentioned in sensitivity analysis. Simulation is done multiple times, multiple number of times with multiple variables at a time or constantly making many changes repeatedly again and again. So generally simulation is taken up with the help of a computer. So we also call that as Monte Carlo uh, computer simulation. So with the help of computer, 
many number of times the same experiment is conducted by randomly making changes to the numbers but in case of sensitive in sensitivity analysis this also talks about making a change in the input to observe what impact does it have on the output but then here it is can only vary one estimate at a time so taking only one estimate at a time then the, the experiment is conducted or the result is noted down that is about the sensitivity analysis simulation multiple inputs multiple variables are changed randomly and the output is noted down then we have uh, in between these two things there is one concept called as what is expected value expected value is see when there are um, three different possibilities which are expected instead of being biased and going ahead with only one variable um, see they can also decide that yes uh, because 10000 is what is expected it would happen um let's just let's just plan for 10000 or a pessimist person thinks that the on the worst side it can be it can fall down to 8000 so let's plan for 8000 units and then um, plan everything for the future a optimistic person will go ahead with 12000 so he thinks that everything is bright uh, and then um, chances that the demand could rise to 12000 is a very very favorable thing so the decision will be to go with the uh, plan for 12000 units See, these are three different possibilities, but expected value says that instead of being biased towards any one particular variable, consider all of them. Take up uh, the all the three expected values and take up the planning. So, on an average, that is considering eight thousand, ten thousand, twelve thousand, all of them are multiplied into respective probabilities and find out what is the sum total of the outcome. multiplied with its respective probability so that is expected value so this is the attitude of a risk neutral so neither going with the pessimistic view nor the optimistic view a neutral person this neutral person um understands that see every everything is a possibility so on an average considering the um, uh, the average value which is 10000 or a worst scenario of 8000 or a very best scenario uh, of 12000 all of them are anticipated they are multiplied into their respective likeliness of happening probability of happening and then the decision is taken so this is uh, about a risk neutral person what are the advantages the advantages are recognizes that there are several possible outcomes enables the probability of the different outcomes to be taken into account leads directly us, uh, to a simple optimizing decision rule calculations are uh, just have to multiply that calculations are relatively simple there are disadvantages also probability is used as subjective that is the main point see when we are saying that probabilities are used Now how do we understand what are probabilities there is no way that is only based on experience and um, past information or um, from some some source they just understand that this is a chance see um, now that the southern states and then the western belt is all um, uh, i mean uh, affected with this uh, cyclone then we see that the weather is see in every day Uh, we see that it is uh, cloudy what is the chance that there would be a rain we can go as um, 80% chance 90% chance also can be mentioned okay so we see the entire western belt is getting um, is uh, now is uh, affected with the cyclone so rains are very very common so anybody is asking anybody asks what is the probability that there would be rain then from that uh, experience from the uh, when you look at the sky and then understand that this is cloudy so the chances of rain happening are quite uh, high therefore you would say that 80% probability that it would rain 90% probability that it would rain but on a very sunny and a clear day when somebody asks what is the probability that it will rain you will say 10% something like that See, out of experience these probabilities are mentioned so they are again subjective so probability is used as subjective it is dependent on the Um, personal understanding or judgment of an individual they are subjective 
EB is the average P of not useful for one of decision. The average is taken. It doesn't go with one particular decision. They are considering all the three of them. But uh, precisely one thing is not available there. Okay, so this is the, just the average of all the three things. Then expected value gives no indication of risk. Nowhere risk is incorporated into that. Ignores the investor's attitude to risk. Then we have the next concept. From here, the numerical questions start. Uh, the next uh, uh, concept what we have is about the payoff tables. See, uh, first what we need to understand is Investors are of different types. Um, from our uh, family, um, see, from the um, individual families and family members, only we can identify this uh, difference in the attitude or their perception towards um, various things happening. So we can understand that from an uh, individual family also. See. The elderly people generally they prefer investing in uh, investing in um, less risky investment opportunities like they uh, prefer investing in a uh, bank savings account, FD, um, something like that, post office, uh, NSC certificate, government bond. So these are the things which they prefer because they do not want to take up a risk and then they do not want their investment to go down the drain. So they just generally um, choose those things. But in family, some of them, the younger lot, uh, not always, but uh, they may prefer investing in much um, a dynamic investment opportunities like they can invest in real estate, gold, stock market. See, these are the way, things in which they would prefer to invest in that. Um, See, the elderly people here, what example what we are taking, uh, the reason for them choosing these uh, uh, investment opportunities are uh, their investment would be secure, safe and secure. Investment, um, um, see, there would be no way that they will lose uh, their investment. See, the bank will pay off their amount whenever they want to withdraw it from the bank. But in case of these uh, in the stock market and other things, the chance of losing their investment is, is also there. And that, that sometimes depends it is high or lower. The possibility is there that they may lose their investment. Okay, so risk aspect, we see that the conventional investment opportunities have lesser amount of risk. The other things have more amount of risk. So. We see that risk and um, return, if we are talking about. See, certain investments or opportunities have low amount of risk. So when there is low amount of risk, okay, Risk is low, banks pay very, very less amount of interest. We also understand that, isn't it? Anywhere else, if it is invested, it multiplies so many folds. But in case of bank, the rate of interest which is paid annually, periodically is very, very less. So when risk is low, we also see the feature that return is very low. But the other investment opportunities like stock market, real estate, gold, precious metals and all, we see that the risk is quite high. When the risk is high, we also see that when they earn a return, the return is also quite high. So the, now why would anyone choose a particular investment opportunity? It is based on their um, attitude towards risk. Not necessarily that always the, old, uh, the older lot uh, go with the conventional, they can also be taking dynamic decisions about investing in stock market, real estate, etc. Uh, I mean, generally, to make it simple to understand, I just mentioned it, but it could be the other way around also. 
sometimes the younger lot could be very pessimistic about uh, choosing the, the dynamic investment opportunities so it it could be the other way around also but i for simple simplicity and then simple and un, simply understanding i gave that example so we see that basically um the perception towards um, risk differs from person to person there are people who are quite optimistic in terms of investing so they are also willing to take up the risk whatever is the risk present some of them are pessimistic so they even want to forego their return just to ensure that there is no risk which is present in their investment opportunity focusing on that focusing on that risk uh, appetite and the attitude towards uh, taking up the risk we see that there are certain um, um, decision choices which the people would choose for different things so that is presented as expected value maximax maximin minimax regret rule so these are the things which are uh, given the different de uh, decision choices are given for different possible scenarios so let's see what they are expected value just now we've done what is expected value it talks about the risk neutral attitude of the investors wherein he would consider the best thing the average thing and the worst thing all all of them are considered uh, by a risk neutral person so that's expected value then maximax is a risk seeker he wants to maximize his return so the the term has maxi max so there are two maxes here so it should be split into two parts the other one maxi min also maxi is one part min is one part so when there are alternatives available from the alternatives the investor chooses those opportunities where the return is maximum first selection is select all the maximum uh, select those alternatives which give maximum return then out of that from among the maximum then again go select with the maximum one maximum among the maximum alternatives maximum uh, profits maximum talks about first go with what is the minimum amount minimum amount of return which can be earned after selecting the minimum returns from among the alternatives the maximum is selected okay maximum so risk seeker risk averse and risk neutral then fourth one is minimax regret rule so uh, let's take it up um, we'll work out the questions uh, uh, based on these four things so first to um, solve these four or uh, different decision uh, techniques we need to tabulate the data so that's what is called as payoff table so that has to be presented in such a way that it becomes easy to take up the calculations on the screen question number 129 the same data set is given um, and we are asked to calculate all uh, four techniques um, dealing with risk and uncertainty in decision making question number 129 talks about shuffles company uses forklift trucks in its uh, warehouses 
the management accountant is deciding which grade of trucks to buy based on company's risk capital there are three grades of trucks the a series b series and c series the decision for the truck is dependent on shuffle shuffle company's growth in its online market which could be at 15% 30% or 40% for the next period the management accountant has correctly produced a payoff table showing the daily contribution earned for each of the outcomes Can you see the Excel sheet? Can you see the Excel sheet? Okay. So let's solve question number one twenty nine. What are we asked to find out? We are asked to find out if Shapel's company is risk averse. If if uh, the investor is a risk averse investor. What is the decision of the investor to go with? This covers is to go with maxi min. This covers investor will choose maxi min. So the decision is dependent on what is the uh, solution for maxi min. we see the payoff table is given what information do we have let's first identify what is the information which is present the decision for the truck is dependent on shuffle company's growth in its online market which could be there are three different growth possibilities which can happen for the next period either the growth in the economy could be or growth in the market could be 15% or 30% Or forty percent. So these are uh, these are three different possibilities which are present there. Then the decision is about which grade of truck will it purchase. So grade of truck. There are three different grades of truck. So the types of truck we have it as series A, A series truck, or B series truck, or C series truck. So there are three different possibilities here. So which one the Choice is about which truck would they go with selecting. The selection is about which which uh, truck. If they have to choose the truck, the selection of the truck amidst the different possibilities of the growth rates. So it could be the market could grow at at a fifteen percent, at thirty percent or forty percent. So if there is fifteen percent growth rate, they see that. By choosing truck A, they can earn a contribution of two thousand four hundred, one thousand eight hundred, or three thousand six hundred. Similarly, the thirty percent and forty percent also, what contribution can be earned is mentioned. The uh, investor is a discovers investor, so the choice will be about maximum. So if the choice is about maximum, first step is. they would go with choosing the minimum return for each of these uh, trucks the uh, the return uh, which would be expected will be minimum so highlight all the minimum returns and highlight all the minimum returns and then um after that select the maximum out of the minimum returns now let's start identifying what is the minimum return if truck a is chosen 